Welcome and hello everybody. We take a very, very smooth uh, start today to let the rest of the people join and um, come in. But because of the fact that we have two hours only to talk about such big things like sustainable film production, I hope you don't mind me starting the round. And so welcome everybody on behalf of the German Film Commissions. The German Film Commissions, uh, most of you might know us. We, we are those little small offices that know a lot and that it can help you with everything and all questions regarding locations, shooting permits, funding as well, although we in person are not in charge of the funding, but we are part of the funding bodies of the regional film plants in Germany. And uh, we do a lot more. And as you might know, we have this uh, Keen to be Green event series running since, Philip, do you know when it first happened? I think three years ago four years ago that would be my guess may 2020 we started with set design <laughs> so first of, so, so we we run this event series to educate to discuss and to raise consciousness uh, for the necessity and the perspectives of uh, sustainability and sustainable sustainable film production and today is the first time that we look abroad and we have a very, very strong international partner on our side. It's the Creative Europe Desks Germany. And I would kindly like to ask Susanne to say a few words on behalf of the Creative Europe Desks Germany. Welcome, Susanne. Yeah, thank you so much, Christiane. Um, first of all, a big thank to all the German film commissions who curated and prepared this event and as well um, Philip, of course. Um, as you know, maybe we are four media, uh, Creative Europe media offices based in Germany, in, in Potsdam, um, in Dusseldorf, in Hamburg and in Munich. So we are also small little offices that are here to help you in terms of preparing your application to find co-production partners and in many, many other respects. Um, maybe just very briefly, in a nutshell, what is Creative Europe doing in terms of greening? Um, as you know, there is the European policy um, called Green Deal. That's, of course, also our agenda in the Creative Europe program. We are uh, supporting green projects like training programs, festival, um, new tech projects and other things. Um, to help the industry developing in terms of greening. Um, we implemented within our different calls and we have all together like 30 different funding lines. We implemented green criteria and green strategies you have to provide for your company, for your project and you get um, extra points for that. Um, Creative Europe launched uh, or published a study earlier on this year. It's called Greening the Creative Europe Program. There is a lot of different um, strategies and projects and um, including a monitoring guide um, and a practical greening guide. Um, my colleague, yeah, she, Uta, just um, put the link in the chat. So there is a lot in it. And still running the uh, European um, carbon calculator tender. We all waited for that such a long time. And I very much hope we will have some results end of the year. And what will, will happen throughout the next years in the program, we have to see after the midterm evaluation. Um, for the years 25, 26, 27, I'm very sure that things will adapt it and maybe also requirements will become more, even more clear and more concrete. So that's very briefly from my side. And I hand back to Christiane, um, who will present the structure of today's program. 
Thank you very much, uh, Susanne. I think uh, you were you are here also to announce that we'll have another event soon next year, I think, to go further into detail in, about what the uh, European <coughs> Union and uh, Creative Europe um, decided on this. So today, it's rather um, the focus is on European countries. We have three complexes. We have a fantastic case study on a German Austrian co production. And uh, so we welcome here Nina Hauser from the Austrian Film Institute. And we uh, welcome Katharina Retzlaff from the Federal German Funding Board as two representatives of funds that. Um, uh, that uh, decided on obligatory ecological standards in combination with uh, the funding. And we have the producers, uh, the producing com companies, Tempest Film and Lot Lotus Film of the project, The Glory of Life. We have Helge Sasseir, the producer. We have the line producer, Clemens Wollein from the Austrian partner, Lotus Film. And we have uh, Julia Mitterlina, the green consultant on the Austrian side of this uh, project. So it will be very interesting on how to really produce um, sustainable across borders, in that case, German-Austrian co-production. We did look into France and we welcome uh, Alissa Aubon from Ecoprod, one of the pioneers, I think, of ecological standards in Europe, and Cecile Laurenson from uh, Cottonwood, a company that co-produced with France and Belgium, and we are very, very uh, interested in your input as well. And then we have one project um, that's very interesting. We had a German production working according to the German um, uh, the German ecological standards, Green Motion, and working with a fantastic green consultant in Prague in the Czech Republic, because the series Hagen, produced by the German company Constantine, was fully shot in the Czech Re Republic. So we look at how can a national, uh, well, how can regional national standards be fulfilled when shooting abroad? That's all from my side. For the moment, I would very like want to welcome Philip Gassmann, our host and moderator, and pass the word on to you. Thank you all for being here. I'm very uh, happy to share this discussion and this event with you. P uh, Philip, it's your turn now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christiane, and thank you for organizing all this. This has been a tremendous work, and I see people from Scotland, from Mallorca, from Spain, Portugal, people from uh, pretty much all over the place taking part in this. And this is a, a real dream come true because we always said we cannot save the world alone. We need you. We all need to work together on these issues. We cannot do this just ourselves in our little countries. We need to do it on a European level. That's why I have my little flags here. I wanted to make it a, look a little more official. Uh, and I can guarantee Ursula von der Leyen will probably walk in. We invited her. We'll see. We'll see her if she shows up. We'll see. Wait. But it's a big issue. It's a big issue. And um, I grew up in France. I was born in Germany. So basically, I'm a, I'm a real European and my heart is European. And we can see right now, politically, there's tendencies that are going against that. And it's something that we really need to protect, that we have open borders, that we can work together, and that we have the chance uh, to work together. But at the same time, we all know we have different systems different uh, strategies in the different countries. We have different economies. We have different laws. So it's not all united yet. But at the other time, we have climate change. We were pretty much all hit pretty hard this year by climate change. We all saw that uh, things get worse, that things increase, that time is really urgent. We need to work faster and we need to be more on all these issues together. And that's why we're talking today about how to work together in film in terms of sustainability. That's the topic for today. And we said it's important to learn about each other. It's important to know about each other. And that's why we are starting today with three countries, as Christiana mentioned. And the idea is really to understand each other in a better way and to find ways fast and to harmonize fast our co-production so that we can work in a more easy, smooth way 
together on sustainable film production. That's the idea for today. And we hope that in the next sessions, we can also get other countries involved and that we get an overview with all the different countries, the different nations in terms of sustainable film production. That's the idea. So let's start. We have some great guests and we have some great projects and we will start with Austria so and Germany working together on a co-production. And I'm very happy that we have two leading figures in terms of sustainability when it comes to film funding, because of course that's a crucial and important uh, point. So on one end, we have Katharina Retzlaff and Nina Hauser. And the great thing is that they are talking to each other. They're already working on harmonizing these things together. And I would like to start with Katharina, Katharina Retzlaff, who's the speaker of the sustainability department and the speaker of the FFA, the Federal German Funding Institution. And uh, I would, add, would like to ask Katharina as a first glance to quickly explain the basic standards in Germany when it comes to sustainable film production. Up to you, Katharina. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Philip, <laughs> for handing over the word to me. And first of all, also a warm hello from my side as well. I'm really so glad that there are so many of you here today who are interested in the topic. And yeah, I think it just shows that it really hits the nail on the head in these times because yeah, sustainability in film production is becoming increasingly vital, luckily. And um, we noticed that the industry also increasingly embraces the topic and the practices. But of course, uh, the challenges of maintaining ecological standards in co-produced films can be complicated from navigating diverse sets of regulations to harmonizing sustainable practices. So yeah, it's really like a puzzle. You, you have different regulations, different expectations and everything sort of needs to align towards a sustainable um, final product. So as mentioned, our plan today is to unravel a bit the complexities and also explore the hurdles and solutions when it comes to co-producing movies across borders. And yeah, since we have different perspectives on the topic today, I what I'm going to do now is to present the German regulations, the so-called ecological standards. Some of you know them already, some of you might have heard of them. So I will give you really just uh, a little overview of what they are, how they are implemented in the funding system in Germany now, and also, of course, how they affect um, co-productions. And I've prepared a little uh, presentation that I want to um, start. Let's see. Um, well, Katharina is starting the presentation. I just remind you of the fact that when there are questions you would like to raise, do that in the Q&A section. Thank you. Okay, um, so yeah, let's start right off. So what are the ecological standards? Um, they are nationwide, uniform ecological standards that were established to reduce the industry's environmental impact. And they apply to, as the title already says, says to all German cinema, TV, and online VOD productions. So this means we have one set for all. And um, they were implemented as of March 1st this year in 2023. And what is very important to mention is that they were developed in a collaborative process. So together with the industry, with broadcasters, with production companies, VOD services, with film funding entities, so the national and the regional ones, they were all involved in a very long process, but that led to the final result that the standards were published this year and are now really an inherent part of the audiovisual media sector in Germany. So how are they applied? Some really general points. They apply to all stages of production from pre to post production. So that means um, from the very beginning when you implement, for example, a green consultant or sustainability officer as it's also sometimes called, um, till to post production where, for example, the post production companies are asked to have green energy. Second important point, they apply for the parts realized in Germany. This will be relevant later also for the, for the aspects um, of co-productions and um, if production conditions allow it of course compliance with the standards for the production parts carried out abroad are welcome and um, I think we will see later on whenever talks um, how this can can happen as well 
but officially um, the standards are or have to be um, met in, in Germany. So uh, what are the three pillars or the areas of application? Um, uh, yeah, what areas of application do the ecological standards have? So first of all, and this is really um, very important, is that they have be become mandatory for film funding. So within the framework of the federal and the regional film funding institutions, they are now um, implemented. That means in order to receive funding for an audiovisual media project whatsoever, you have to adhere to the ecological protocol. If you do, you get funding. If you don't, you do not get funding. This is yeah as simple as that, and it's really a big change. And um, yeah, this has happened as of March this year. The second important point is that um, it, the standards are also the basis for a voluntary industry commitment. That means um, if broadcasters, VOD services or production companies um, make a corresponding commitment to adhere to the standards, they are mandatory for them as well. And um, yeah, a big number of um, public broadcasters, private broadcasters and um, VOD services have made that commitment so far. So yeah, it's um, established already in a, uh, yeah, pretty far in, in Germany. And the third important um, area of application is the so-called green motion label. Some of you might have already seen um, the logo or have heard of it. And it's a label, a voluntary label that you can apply for. And the, yeah, the ecological standards are the, the basis for that as well. So it's the same requirements. But additionally, if more than 25% of the overall production costs are incurred abroad, then the standards also have to be fulfilled there, so abroad. So these are the main three areas. And um, yeah, for those who don't know the standards, I will give you a very short recap since, you know, there are different models of green protocols nowadays in, in Europe and internationally, some work with lists, with points. So I will just briefly uh, explain to you how they work in Germany. So the standards are divided into five fields of action. We have the general requirements, we have uh, energy use, personal and material transport, accommodation and catering, and um, employment and use of material. And these fields of action comprise all in all 39 requirements. And of these requirements, 21 are mandatory, so they have to be fulfilled. And 18 are so-called target requirements. They should be met. They are not considered a strict regulation, but more an appeal. And um, of course, there are always cases when certain mandatory requirements can't be fulfilled. So a maximum of five deviations from the 21 um, mandatory requirements are admissible. That means if you fulfill 16 out of the 21 mandatory requirements, you're good to go. You have fulfilled the green protocol. Um, I don't want to go in too much depth right now, but just to mention, this is... Um, the standards are a, a, a dynamic process. So that means in the future, there will be uh, changes made. For example, some target requirements will become mandatory requirements. And um, because as the, the process develops, of course, there will have to be made some, some changes, some adaptations. But this, what I'm showing you right now, is the, how it's working as of now. And um, yeah, now the important question, how do the German ecological standards affect co-productions? And um, first of all, here I'm coming back to the point that I already made, that the ecological standards apply only to Germany. So that means if, for example, you are a German production company and you co-produce with a foreign partner and you shoot 50% in Germany, 50% in the partner country, then officially you only have to meet the standards for the 50% production parts in Germany. If you make it abroad, perfect. It's, it's, um, it's the best case, I would say. But um, officially, to fulfill the standards and to get your funding, you have to um, verify in the end with a very, you know, very verification process only um, that you realize then in Germany. But this means, of course, that uh, yeah, an early and also transparent communication with your co-production partner is necessary because they will have to know what kind of um, implications this will have to the production process. 
Um, yeah, the second important point is um, a recording of CO2 emissions has to be made. This is one mandatory um, criteria. And this protocol must be carried out for the whole project. So not only for the production parts in Germany, but also for the parts abroad. And this also means that you have to, you know, really communicate closely because um, you will need the data in order to um, finalize the report uh, in the end. And the third point, and this is more of a question that of course comes up because uh, when you co-produce, the question is, what requirements exist possibly in the country or the region of the co-production partner. And um, yeah, co-producing films in Europe with varying regulation concerning sustainable film production can pose several challenges. We know that, you know, for example, concerning budgeting, of course, um, adapting to different sustainable standards can impact the budget of film production and also logistics and supply chain management you know here you might have difficulties in sourcing eco-friendly materials equipment and services that comply with different regulations and also concerning for example resource efficiency each country's regulations might demand different energy efficient or waste management practices and that can create complexities in in the whole process and Finally, also, you know, reporting and documentation, important point, because each country might require specific documentation and reporting. And this can add administrative burdens. Also, you know, time and money factor, we, we know that, you know. Um, so we as funding institutions, um, we are really aware of these um, facts. And uh, we also face challenges, for example, concerning the recognition of different protocols. But this is the point, we also communicate with each other, just like you and your production partner, you um, have to be in exchange to make it work. We, as a funding institutions, we are also um, exchanging and we're exchanging experiences and we try to find solutions for similar problems because um, as I said, the problems are not occurring just in one country, they are occurring everywhere. So we also have to face these problems together in order to facilitate co-productions um, uh, everywhere. And yeah, so one partner country that we exchange with regularly, and it was already <laughs> mentioned here, um, is Austria. Um, and yeah, now I will give the word to Nina from the ÖFI in Vienna. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Philip, do you want to say anything yes. before I start my presentation? Absolutely. I would uh, like to introduce you because uh, Nina, Nina Hauser, just as Katharina, is a pioneer uh, in terms of green production. And she is leading the sustainable department at the ÖFI, the Austrian Film Institute. And Katharina and Nina are doing the same job, which is a fantastic job. They're implementing sustainability in their funding systems. And I can tell you, this is a heavy chunk of work. This is really a lot of stuff they're doing. And that's why, thank you again, um, Katharina, for sharing the, the, the German system. And now we would like to learn from Nina, the Austrian system. So up to you, Nina. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for the invitation and um, from, for the organization as well. And um, for this really important event today, because we have to speak to each other. Uh, my name is Nina Hauser. Um, I'm an expert for green filming and funding uh, in, from Austrian Film Institute. Um, I was commissioned um, to develop and integrate mandatory regulations in the film funding system in Austria since 2019. I'm a certified green film consultant. I'm one of four founders of the Association of Green Film Consultants in Austria. And the Austrian Film Institute is running a green filming department since uh, this year. Um, I make it together with my colleague Christian, uh, Christian Rutner. And I'm an active member of several green filming sustainability working groups, like, for example, the Green Co Pro Europe group and the Green Filming uh, Austria working group. Um, yeah, we et established it uh, this year. So, um, I will show you um, a little overview how we uh, just uh, implement all our regulations and uh, mandatory um, uh, things for uh, in the funding uh, film funding system. 
In January 2021, uh, we have an adaption of our film funding guidelines. We developed for that a mandatory final green report and a guide for action for filmmakers. Uh, the years after the implementation of the mandatory regulation starts in our film funding system, in harmonization for sure with other uh, film funding institutions in Austria, we make information events for filmmakers online during the pandemic. And uh, in 2022, in preparation for the implementation of the green bonus, uh, we further developed our regulations, we further developed a criteria catalog of ecological minimum standards for Austrian cinema film productions. And also additionally, we developed a criteria catalog for Austrian cinema releases um, in Austria. Um, just to let you know, there's a new federal film law in Austria that grants 5% green bonus uh, since January 2023. Uh, the Austrian Film Institute is responsible for cinema productions and uh, for TV, VOD and service productions is this FISA plus. Our funding policy goals are to increase the competitiveness and attractiveness of Austria as film location. We have to create incentives for ecological sustainable free productions and we have to contribute to equal opportunities for all genders in filmmaking. Um, here I can show you the Austrian Film Institute Green Filming and Funding System. The Austrian uh, Film Institute has been managing two uh, funding channels since January 2023. ÖFI is based on a selective funding, that means the funding decides uh, by a project commission. And ÖFI Plus is an uncapped automatic film funding for cinema productions in form of an incentive model for 30% on Austrian spend. Plus possible uh, 5% green bonus on top uh, for all projects that have been proven to be produced sustainable. The basis of the regulations uh, for the green bonus is the catalogue of criteria uh, for minimum ecological standards, which contains five, uh, 25 must criteria and 18 target criteria. Similar is that the green filming check, this test or uh, checklist answers the questions if the film production is able to reach the minimum of the must have criteria and is also the commitment of the production because the checklist is part of the funding contract. And other similar things are six mandatory basic criteria. Uh, different is the calculation scheme. For if you have to reach 20 must criteria to get the green bonus, you have to reach 22. At the end, there is a mandatory uh, final green report where the production has to um, prove and verify the must and target criteria uh, from their checklists. If everything is proven positive, there is a payout of the green bonus. Here I can show you uh, the green filming checklist. As I have already mentioned before, you uh, can see there that there are six mandatory must criteria. Um, the green ones are must, the other one are the target criteria. Here you fill in which criteria are planned for your con concrete project. And if something is not applicable, it will still be counted. That means, for example, you have a documentary and there is no on-set catering. This means not applicable. Therefore, every project um, has the chance to come uh, on the 22 to 25 plant must criteria. Um, we are also monitoring additional costs. In the beginning, many producers ask for additional costs and how they can finance them. Um, a very, um, a very important topic. So, um, first of all, in our experience um, till now, there are additional costs in the beginning of the implementation and transformation. But um, as we already see, uh, green filming reduces uh, costs also. But if there are additional costs for sustainable implementation, the Austrian Filming Institute accept them in the project calculations. And the green bonus is in, independent of the actual amount of the green filming additional costs. Nevertheless, additional costs must be shown in a separate supplement in the calculation uh, called green filming additional costs and are worked out in collaboration with the green film consultants um, during the project development and application. In addition to fixed 
positions such as the green film consultant or the green coordinator, additional staff members can be selected in drop down lists. It is important that these additional costs are in any case part of the main calculation for sure, and also the costs of the certification um, with the Austrian Eco label are accepted. Um, the development of our guidelines and regulations um, in also the criteria catalog um, of ecological minimum standards uh, for Austrian cinema film production is created in, in cooperation and collaboration with the joint network of green filming and funding. First of all, and very, um, very important member is the Evergreen Prisma, the Law Austrian Film Commission and the team of the, of, uh, of the Evergreen Prisma. They are making a very good work with us and uh, is one of the most uh, important partner um, in, in the development of uh, green filming in Austria. We also work together with Philip Gassmann as long-term expert and with the Association of Green Film Consultants in Austria to focus on practical expertise. Um, this catalog is developed also, and this is very important for today, in the interest of transnational harmonization. And it is based not only on the Austrian Eco label, um, but also on the ecological standards for German cinema TV and online VOD productions. Um, since April 2022, um, we are running the Green Corporate Europe, Europe, Europe Working Group. Uh, it is established to find solutions for transnational film productions. Um, the aim of this uh, group is that we develop together with partners uh, from institutions, from film institutions, funding institutions, experts, green film consultants um, from different countries with already established green measures based on funding regulations or regulations anchored in federal film laws. Um, and we work on concrete solutions uh, and are supervising our transnational funded film productions. Very and most important is our mutual recognition of our funding regulations um, and final green reports uh, for sustainable film production uh, that are on the same high quality uh, level for transnational and international green productions. Um, we are interlinking our models, uh, our models for sustainable filmmaking. We have the same and similar instruments, uh, such as uh, the Green Film Consultancy with the same curriculum trained by Philip Gassmann. We have the CO2 calculators for film and TV uh, from Klimaktiv. They are country specific, but, but also based on each other. We have established certifications. We have catalog of criteria for sure. And I have already mentioned country specific, but based on each other and um, worked out in the thinking of transnational harmonization. And we have the evaluation and verification systems together. This is a fantastic uh, thing because the funding institutions, the film production companies and the green film consultants can talk to each other on an eye level and we can recognize and accept all instruments in our funded projects. This guarantees a high quality common standard in practice. Um, very important is also the mandatory final green report to make sure that the whole film project was proven to be sustainable. Therefore, um, together with uh, Philip Gassmann and the um, National Film Funding Agency, Katharina Retzlaff and her colleague, uh, we developed our proofing systems for uh, of the final green report in harmonization and cooperation this year. Um, this guarantees a transnational credible and mutual recognition, verification, proofing system and minimizes the work on reporting for each country. And additionally, it guarantees a planning security for the film production and the film consultants, especially because it includes specific information uh, on which documents that have to be submitted at the end. And all of these decisions and hard work to integrate these regulations uh, in all countries <laughs> over the last few years have shown that it was worth it 
because nothing goes on without cooperation and all of this has uh, an enormous uh, push effect also on other countries where our films are made. Um, if you have any questions, you will find uh, all information on our homepages also in English. Uh, and now I give the word back to Philip and the filmmakers um, who will show us how it works in practice. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nina. Great. That, that was a great overview. Before we move on to the project, which is really a fantastic and extremely interesting project, I would just ask Katharina in return also about this harmonization, you know, harmonization, the different guidelines, harmonization, the reporting. Maybe you can just say a few words about this process, how you work on this and what you have already achieved working together now with Nina and the Austrian Film Institute. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Nina mentioned already really a, a big part of what we've been doing so far. And I think most importantly is, you know, um, harmonization has to happen on different levels. So as she said, for example, the tools. So you have the calculator. This is already a big and important aspect because um, so also you can compare data. And um, in our system, um, the COT, the CO2 emissions report, is a mandatory criteria um, before a project and after a project. And uh, if you are there on the same page, this already helps a lot. Then uh, secondly, of course, yeah, the standards themselves and then the, the verification process. This is, leads to the fact that what Nina mentions, we can mutually recognize our, our reports. That means um, when there's a German Austrian co-production and we uh, verify that the production process in Germany um, was fine and they fulfilled the criteria, we hand over the report and also can say, check <laughs> we're done and um, this is also a very practical aspect and then um finally also um the for example green consultants uh green consultants are trained in germany and in austria as well and we compared the curriculum and we it's, it's similar and basically almost the same so what we can do is we can accept that when a german austrian co-production for example has a green consultant from austria um it can be regarded as um, complied with concerning the, the mandatory criteria of green consultant. Of course, a project can use two green consultants because some are more specialized in Germany and Austria, but from the, prin the principle is that um, theoretically you could use one green consultant and um, the criteria is, um, yeah, is verified in, in that aspect. So, you have to also always consider, I think, the yeah the, the layers of uh, of sustainability in film production that there that there are, and I think yeah with Austria we try to harmonize the best way possible. And since what I mentioned, it's a dynamic system, so in the future we will have the similar questions and we will talk to each other. We will see is it the same are the same um, developments happening in Austria as they are in Germany and how can we um, proceed together uh, in the future? So it's always important to to talk, to communicate and see that you can um, yeah get together the best way possible. Yes, Great. it's also also really important that to say that uh, that we are just uh, working also with other countries together yeah. right now, yeah. also with South Tyrol, uh, and we are just uh, trying to get uh, things uh, together also with other countries uh, in Europe. So um, it's very important that we are just co uh, find a cooperation and have the same um, instruments uh, as uh, Katharina says already. Yeah. Very nice. For those who don't know South Tyrol, there's two South Tyrols. One and the one uh, Nina is talking about is South Tyrol in Italy. So that means that's another country, of course. And, and I think what you're describing is exactly what we have on our table, what's going to be a huge task, how to harmonize all these things, uh, starting with Europe. But I think, Christiana, there's a question and then we will move on to the project. Uh, there's a question that has been raised by Olga Baruch. Uh, she is asking Katarina, um, how about the German co-productions, for instance, with France, uh, where the shooting only takes place, where the shooting fully takes place abroad, for instance, in France? Um, uh, how the meeting of the German? Uh, also, what, how do you um, how do you proceed there? You have a German producer fully shooting abroad. 
but he also needs to um, apply the uh, uh, and fulfill the German ecological standards, doesn't he? Yeah. Or she. Uh in that case, the standards can be um, regarded as fulfilled because, as I said, they apply only to Germany. And if the shooting is completely in takes place in France, then um, you would say that the they the standards don't apply here, so um, they are regarded as fulfilled, even if they don't fulfill. Even them. if they don't sh shoot in Germany, yeah, because they have to be applied only in Germany. Oh. Okay. Okay. Is that something that's being discussed right now? Um, this is the how it's proceeded as of now, and as I said, it's a dynamic process. So probably um, there will be um, adaptations made um, with the process that you know things are moving on in Europe. So yeah, thank you. Okay, so now we will move on to the co-production to the actual project that has happened or that is happening between Germany and Austria. It's a beautiful film project called The Glory of Life. And there's two companies involved, and we're very happy to have here with us Helge, Clemens, and Julia, who are all three working on this project. And I will be starting with Helge Sasse, who is the founder, producer of a, a film production company called Tempest Film. And uh, Helge, maybe you can just explain briefly the size or the specific challenges of this product. Oh, Helge. Helge still there? I'm sorry, I was muted. No <laughs> <Now> problem. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so this is a film that we're currently producing. It's not done. We're in post-production. Uh, this is a film about one of the most important writers of the 20th century, the Franz Kafka. And uh, the, the title of the film is The Glory of Life, but he dies in the film. It's his last uh, year in his life, uh, and uh, it will be the centenary of his death next year when we release the film in theaters, uh, hopefully worldwide. It's uh, started, the sales started in at AFM in Los Angeles. Um, the, the emphasis of the story is uh, Kafka's relationship to uh, a very extraordinary woman. Uh, her name was Dora Diamond. Uh, she came from Poland, and they meet at the East Sea. So the East Sea, the Baltic Sea, as you name it in English, the Baltic Sea near Rostock was the place where Kafka met Dora in summer, at a summer camp. Uh, he was sick at that time already. Uh, they moved to Berlin and eventually moved to Vienna where Kafka died. So we had three locations to shoot. One is uh, at the Baltic Sea, it's Berlin and it's Vienna. Vienna to Rostock is about a thousand kilometers. That's about transportation because that's one of the aspects of green filming. So the, the story, the emphasis of the story is the love between Franz Kafka and Dora, which was also unusual because Kafka for all his life had difficulties to get closer to a woman. He wrote many letters, but he got never got married and uh, had difficulties to communicate uh, with women. Um, the story also embraces certain other aspects of the 20s, which is the hyperinflation. It's about a Jewish tradition. And it's also about the differences between what we call the Eastern Jews and the Western Jews. Dora came from Poland, so that was a rather orthodox way of life the Jews in Poland lived at the time, where Kafka came from Prague. So Prague and his father was speaking German and not Jewish, and Kafka wrote in German language, although he was born in Czechoslovakia, the today Czechoslovakia, at the time it was the monarchy from Austria. Uh, and all of these aspects sort of melt into that film where, where Kafka's greatest love in his life uh, accompanied him uh, during his last year when he died of tuberculosis. Um, we started pre-production in December 2022. So if you looked at Katarina Retzlaff's presentation, she said we implemented on March 1st, 2023. 
The catalog existed before that. It was just a recommendation. In March 1st, when we were right in the middle of um, the pre-production, uh, they were established as being mandatory if you want to get funding, uh, which created the, the problem that we were a little surprised in our structure to prepare the production, that we had all of a sudden, it was mandatory to, to fulfill certain obligations. And we were really happy that we had the Austrian partner on our side uh, with Julia and Clemens and Lotus Film, because they were more established in looking at green standards because it was introduced earlier in Austria. So that is why my very general statement about that was, I'm very happy that we followed the rules. We know already that we reduced the, uh, the carbon, uh, um, uh, the use of carbon uh, oxide by, by a lot of percent as projected and as, as really happened. So I'm happy because nothing will change unless we try it. And um, I hand over to Julia and to uh, Clemens because they can you tell you more about details of how they, because Julia also got into it much earlier than our green consultant in Germany. Um, okay. They can explain to you what the challenges have been and what the success of the story is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Helge. It sounds like a very interesting and touching story and important story, in my modest opinion. So we will move now on to Clemens. Clemens Wollan, who's the line producer and who is, as you just said, from Lotus Film. And maybe, Clemens, you can ta talk a little bit about the challenges and also about the actual status, but especially about the experience of coming together in such a short time and meeting two different standards. Yeah, hello to everybody from my side. I'm very happy to be here and um, that we can present our project and um, the way we've, we've, uh, we've uh, made uh, with the project. Um, as Helge said, it's still not finalized, so we're still not uh, um, um, finished that project, but um, um, it's in final post-production stage, so um, I think it's okay to like talk about the green facts. Um, as we are also approaching our end report uh, very soon for that project. Um, yeah, what I what I can tell you is like um, very important is that you like um, get all your funding schemes that you have in your project. Um, check the measure measures and um, the criteria catalogs that are um, like at, almost attached to your contracts, maybe already or um, available on the website or wherever. Um, you have to get these measures. Um, 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 you have to, to like really know them by heart, maybe <laughs> let's say, because they're gonna uh, they're gonna like uh, be with you for the next months. Um, it's it's a lot of these measures are um, or uh, these criteria are uh, similar to each other. Some are very different to each other. Um, as like uh, already as already been said today. Um, Austria is uh, uh, maybe or is definitely uh, more or is advancing uh, faster than maybe Germany has done in the last years. Um, that's uh, because of the effort and all the hard work of, of some people, especially like Nina, but also like uh, Katharina on the German side, of course, yeah, um, who have really uh, put a lot of work and effort into that, giving us producers strong financing tools as well that we can use, um, which is also important, of course, because everybody knows uh, nothing's free and um, we all have to uh, produce with money. And um, yeah, it's very important that you start from a very early uh, stage of the project as early as anyhow possible. Um, set up a green, let's say, task force or a green gang, however you want to call it. Um, um, so it's very important to have uh, responsible persons for each country to say um, so that's the way we did it because um, um, I've discussed it several times with Julia in advance we were discussing if she is uh, if she thinks that she can overtake Germany as well but with the, we were quite an early stage we decided we have to take someone from Germany as well so we have the local experience and the local know-how on board um, it's 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 um, um, 
very important that you think on your production from the very early stage, but also till the very end, because you have to keep the reporting and everything that you have to like uh, show and prove in mind through the whole process. It's very important to um, um, make yourself a green commitment and, and, and engage the crew, the, the filmmakers, the financing, everybody that is involved at an early stage. Um, set yourself achievable goals that also uh, um, 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 are doable for you and the team. And, 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 and um, it is very important that, that you try to unify these goals as well, of course, with the mandatory um, um, goals or with the mandatory um, reporting or regulations that you have through your funding, via your funding schemes. Yeah? And um, identify the possible partners as early as possible, yeah. Uh, like uh, uh, green partners, you can supply with their products or their know-how or with their uh, services. Yeah, this is very important. Um, I know there's not too much experience. Um, we have had the same problem as well, but um, it, of course, it takes time. It takes effort to like set up your, let's say, green network or green production network, but. Uh, as you all know, this is going to here to stay with us, which is good and it's absolutely necessary. We don't have to talk about that here, I hope. Um, um, and um, this is going to be with us in the next years. Hopefully, it has to be a, a very important part of a production. Um, it's very important that the funding uh, schemes and all the financing uh, schemes, uh, as well as national schemes, but also uh, 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 schemes like the uh, European, European Commission has that all these uh, funding schemes provide uh, 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 tools, green financing tools. Yeah, so um, it's 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 uh, that there's no way around that. I think, and um, um, so we have to proceed with that. And um, there's at the moment, as you have heard, it's like a, a five percent uh, financing. So that's also something um, I hope that's going to be raised in the future. So that this is going to get higher. So it's getting even more stronger and even more interesting and more important. Yeah, um, it's very important that you listen to your um, crew, that you listen to your department heads. They may bring up some innovations, some ideas. So don't. Uh, uh, I mean, it's all time consuming. I know. But um, um, include, uh, include uh, green updates, try to communicate achieved goals to your crew, which is also very important so that they see also during production, they see, oh, we have achieved something. Yeah? I mean, I can just remember the first uh, shooting day we had for that production in Vienna. And then and I told someone of the crew to please like collect all the garbage from all the bins we had on, uh, via the set and on, on, on the production offices. And yeah, they came up with something like this for general waste. For a whole crew of like a hundred people for a shooting day, yeah. So it's possible. I mean, you have to like really get into. You have to think about how do I supply beverages? How do I supply my food? Um, how do I uh, um, minimize waste for that? But also like the impact. How is it coming? Uh, what what is used for that? Yeah. So um, there's a lot of of things to keep in mind. Yeah. Right. Um, do a midpoint evaluation. Um, try to uh, get your stuff together uh, as soon as you have maybe a little bit of time for it because it might help you at the end. You might check, okay, there's something we need to like um, have a look at because we're not there actually. And uh, this might not be uh, as we have actually planned it. So this is also very important. So communication, involving departments, um, yeah, arrange, ar arrangements have to be made. Um, everybody knows that uh, you can't fly uh, your whole crew. So we've had like for this specific production, as Helge just said, the problem that we had three shooting locations. We were shooting in Berlin first, going to South, to Austria, to Vienna then, and then all the way up to, to Vostok in Northern Germany. So this was also um, um, kind of the, of the, one of the problems we had to like, work around or, or find solutions for but um, as I yeah just as a hint maybe talk to the people we've had a lot of them saying okay if that is the way I'm gonna take a train overnight and uh, that's the solution yeah so um, and um, 
I mean, of course, there's always people who have to fly. It's time urgent. They have to like uh, get on the next set, uh, take uh, check things, and then say that's okay or it's not okay or stuff like this. So yeah, but um, it's it's a lot of rethinking processes and 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 breaking up structures and and it's a lot of discussion as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Clemens. That, that's a wonderful overview. And it also shows the, all the challenges and all the things you have to think about, all the things you do. And I would like to uh, move on to Julia, Julia Mitalena, who is a producer and a green consultant. And she's already been doing three projects as a green, a green consultant with you, with Lotus Film. And maybe, Julia, you can talk about this implementation and also with the emphasis on working together with Germany, having a co-production. But how did you achieve putting all this together and what were your main steps in terms of green and sustainable production? Oh, coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> no. Now it works. Perfect. <laughs> thank, thank you. Um, and thank you also, uh, Helga and Clemens. And, uh, um, I would, I would like to, to, to. I've prepared myself um, with my experiences and and uh, the problems, the challenges, and also the solutions. And um, yeah, I would like now to Clemens you have already covered a various points of green filmmaking perfectly now I would like to discuss what I learned from this project and highlight also the important points in, in hindsight um, I became part of this project um, when it was submitted for production essentially the, the earlier green film consultants become involved the better you can discuss specific subject areas plan and carry out necessary measures like Clemens already said ideally Preliminary meetings with all department heads take place during the pre-production. Um, so it is important from the outset that the producers support the environmentally conscious projects and then draws the green film consultant. This was very, very important for me that I know that the that Clemens and Helge and Lotus, um, that you are all in my you are all afford my, my, my work. Because especially in the initial stages, there may be some resistance towards the subject due to the heavy workload um, and further challenges. Henceforth, effective communication holds an paramount importance. Ideally, the Green Film Consultant should be perceived as valuable team member who collab collaboratively works towards the team's goal. And not only for myself. I, I, I am a team member, and and I don't want to to work for myself. And I think that's very important that all the people in the team um, know that that we are a team. The green film consultant must be available throughout the entire shoot to provide advice and support to reach the goals. It's essential for green film consultants in various countries involved in co-productions to maintain a strong collaboration. An effective communication adds in identifying issues early on and resolving them swiftly. Accurate documentation in all relevant areas is essential for the final report. The producer and the green film consultants have to keep that in mind the whole time, the whole process. It is imperative that the Green Film Consultant and the production coordination work closely together to ensure efficient data collection. And yeah, of course, it would be ideal if the founding bodies required the same final reports uh, for co-production. It would make everything a little bit easier. That's why I think it's great that there should be harmonization between Germany and Austria in the future. Um, I also believe that in the initial green project, and this is a very important part for me, um, it is important for everyone to acknowledge that achieving perfection immediately is not possible. Green filming is also a learning process from the outset, which enables us to gradually incorporate a diverse range of measures into our daily work routine. And I think that's uh, the main goal, that all these uh, measures are becoming part of our routine. There are no concrete figures yet for the final report the, from, from that project, but um, 
like Clemens already said, we can make uh, an assessment of where we have saved carbon emissions through the implementation of specific measures, primarily through traveling between Berlin and Vienna. Effective planning permitted us to optimize the schedule, resulting in fewer flights. Furthermore, we persuaded, like Clemens said, some team members to take the train instead of flying. And of course, this is only possible if the strict schedule allows it. We also used hybrid and electric vehicles, and we were also able to save some overnight stays or organized stays in sustainable hotels. Another crucial aspect concerned the creation of the set, uh, where we prioritize um, resource con conservation by utilizing reusable or borrowed materials like wood, or also um, use rooms for shooting, which already exists. We managed to significantly reduce our waste, like Clement said, it, it really in, in, in um, during the shooting in Vienna, the waste was uh, very, very little. We focused on borrowing as many customs also as we could while purchasing as a few new ones as possible. Yeah. I think that's the main things okay. we have reached. Mm. Okay, you already mentioned a, a few focuses that we will also discuss at yeah. the very end of this session. But to, to close up this thing, because unfortunately we have to move to the next country, but maybe Clemens or Helga, you can just as a little conclusion say in terms of achievements, Julia already mentioned a few things, but in general terms, yeah, sure. how effective was it? And and just very yeah. briefly, so we can hand over sure. to France, yeah, but yeah, just like significant, uh, significant cost reduction in, in many departments where you would not uh, calculate on that, like transport, okay. like fuels, of course. Um, I mean, as an example, um, I've done this a few years and I've never had uh, people like really going into carpooling, like very happy to be into carpooling yeah? <laughs> instead of like maybe going with the train, yeah? because you have to like have some material transport, but there's always like free space in the cars and, and a lot of crew members, they like, they chatted with it. They started talking to each other about their transports. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So um there's a lot of time saving um, uh, uh, with stuff that uh, you, like you don't need anymore. Yeah, you, okay. you practically don't need it anymore on the set. Yeah? And um, you get recognition, of course, from peers and from 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 other groups. Yeah, and uh, it's simply more efficient. Yeah, you prepare more, you talk more at the beginning, but you're more efficient uh, when shooting. Maybe Great. That. Great. And that's, I think, a really important aspect to always keep in mind. It's also about efficiency. Green production, right. sustainable production means to be more efficient. And who could be against that? You know, Thanks a lot. I think there's one question and uh, then we will move on to, to France. But uh, Christiana, there's a question. Yeah, just a quick question because yeah. the production had two green consultants, one on the German side, one on the Austrian side. To, to be very quick on that, could you have done without any of those two? Um, um, I mean, it's no. mandatory. On the Austrian side, it's absolutely mandatory. So um, there's no way around. And I, I wouldn't do a production on that size uh, with someone who is specialized into that. Um, so I've learned a lot in the last year on that. <laughs> but it's a it's a job. It's a profession. It's a it's yeah. a knowledge yeah. you, you really need as producers. Yeah. Helga, would you board. agree on that? Yes, yes I agree absolutely. The, uh... Um, I believe that uh, the idea of one consultant uh, for more than one country uh, is not the right concept because there are too much regional aspects in terms of green filming that a Vienna person cannot know uh, as a, a Cologne or Berlin person will not know about Vienna. Uh, so two consultants, I think, is more efficient than one, because otherwise Yula would have uh, gotten into more deeply German, uh, let's say, uh, aspects of green filming, uh, which is different from, from Vienna, from Austria. So I think uh, to have two consultants, we were, were just happy that Yulia got in early because we only hired our green consultant right before we started shooting. 
Okay. Uh, because before that, it was not mandatory. Okay. Um, uh, but I believe that the concept of one consultant in each territory is the right one. Okay. Very nice. Thanks yeah. a lot for that. Christiane, we have to move on, but I think there's one yeah, One it's thing. just um, uh, maybe for the very end, we should uh, look at the question regarding sanctions, because I think the standards have yeah. all been, let's say, set up in process together with yeah. the network to make productions. But, but it's quite quite simple. Um, if yeah. you don't meet the mandatory, you don't get the money. So, um... <laughs> yeah, but the difference, Clemens, is that in Austria, you don't get the incentive. While in Germany, I believe ah. it's mandatory to have this report, and I'm not sure what the rule would be if there if we were not to meet the standards that are required. Yeah. So maybe okay. Nina and Katarina, a quick word on that, and then we move on. Very Sorry, quick, Philip. because Sorry, time is running. I'm looking yeah, on the clock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, in Austria, you, you can decide if you want to have the 5% uh, green bonus, but also I have to say um, it's also necessary to, to do it um, already with 20 must criteria. Yeah. So every every uh, film production has to do it. Every uh, film production has mandatory uh, regulations. And for us, it's very important that it uh, is um, implemented for the whole project. It's not only on the parts that we, uh, are shooted in uh, Austria, it's also for the whole project. So you have, if you are shooting somewhere else uh, in another country, um, you have to do also our uh, catalog of criteria if there are no other regulations in the countries. So we try to get in cooperation with the countries who have already have uh, regulations like Germany or South Tyrol or, or someone uh, else. But uh, if you if you are shooting in another country, you have to do it right there also to get the 5% green bonus. It's uh, okay. necessary to, to look over the, the whole project because um, without that, uh, we don't can guarantee a credibility for this topic of uh, green film production. Okay. Perfect. Christiana, I would like to leave it here, if that's okay with you. She's she's pushing, that's good, but we need to move to France. Otherwise, we will not be able to do everything. Thank you so much to, to Julia, Nina, Katarina, Helga, and Clemens. Thank you so much. Great job, and it's fantastic that you're pioneering all these things together. So now, now we move to France, and I, I said uh, I grew up in France, so I, I feel very much connected to France. And France, in terms of green production, is a pioneer. And uh, when you think about France and green production, you immediately think about Ecopot. And we are very happy that Alisa Aubank is with us, and she's the director of operations of Ecopot. And maybe, Alisa, you can explain us a little bit about the standards and the rules concerning sustainable film production in France. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, really happy to be here. As Philip said, I, I'm also, I feel a bit more European than French because I, I'm both French and German and I've lived and worked in Germany. So I'm really happy to be here and to talk about this important subject. Um, so I'm going to share my little presentation and um, I wanted to talk about a bit about what we do at Ecopod. Um, and then what's happening in France, and then go a bit more into detail uh, to present the Ecopod label, which is the, the standards that we have in, in France right now. Um, so some of you might know Ecopod. We've been founded in 2009. Uh, we are not a film fund. We are not an institution. We are um, an industry uh, initiative, so we are an association. Um, we are a network of over 330 members. Uh, we have mostly production companies, but also uh, broadcasters. We have a lot of uh, industry associations and syndicates. Uh, we also have animation studios, filming studios, film schools. Uh, so we cover um, the whole industry, both uh, fiction, documentary, advertising, and animation. Um, we provide um, a lot of uh, trainings for the industry, both for students and for professionals. Uh, for professionals, we do both um, uh, trainings for professionals who want to be more involved in green filming, but still work in their own uh, profession. 
Uh, but then we do also have trainings for people who want to get involved as green consultants, even though we don't have a official job description yet in France for green consultants, but we, we have um, that training that has been uh, happening since last year. And then, of course, we also offer uh, tools that are all free and that you can um, find on our website. Um, some of them are available in English. So we have the Carbon Club, which is our carbon calculator that we created in 2012. So it's already 11 years old. Um, and we launched a new version uh, this year. Uh, the new version um, has been certified by the CNC. I will I get back to that uh, right after. Um, and uh, what is uh, interesting to know is that it's, uh, well, it's available in English and it's also available internationally since we included international emission factors. So you can use it everywhere in the world to establish uh, the carbon footprint of a, of a film production. And you can also use the tool to report uh, the carbon footprint to your stakeholders, for example, to your broadcasters or to film funds, so that uh, the information on carbon um, can be uh, sent to the right persons. Um, we also have a green production guide that you can find on the website. And we recently launched the EcoPod label that I will um, present a bit a bit further. Um, just a quick note on other tools that we can that you can find on our website. We launched in June a green production guide for animation. Um, we are working right now on the English version because a lot of you <laughs> asked for it. Um, but it's, I think, one of the first guides on animation for the animation industry. So if you're interested in that, you can have a look uh, on that. And we also launched uh, recently a guide for outdoor shootings because we felt like there was a big, big focus on reducing carbon emissions, which is, of course, crucial. Uh, but there's also a really important uh, part on minimizing the impact we have on biodiversity. Um, so we launched that guide uh, also this summer. And then we have department checklists as other initiatives might have. Um, so what is happening in France? Uh, there's actually quite a lot happening. So I'll just go over the, the main things. Um, on a national level, our national film fund, the CNC, has launched a national policy for uh, ecological transition for the film and TV industry, which is called Plan Action. Um, and one of the big um, uh, topics of this um, policy is that since March, all productions, uh, fiction and documentary, have to provide a projected carbon footprint and a final footprint to get public funding. Um, and as from January 1st, uh, this um, will be mandatory for production. So if you don't provide a footprint uh, before shooting and after shooting, you won't get um, the national film fund. And uh, the CNC has um, published a unified carbon calculation methodology, uh, which um, you have to follow to be certified as a carbon calculator. So Carbon Club, our carbon tool, has been certified by the CNC in uh, March and can be used uh, to comply with the national regulations. Um, other initiatives in France, we have um, we have been we have had for a few years now uh, two green bonuses uh, that are linked to production um, in, uh, production funds, uh, one in Ile de France, uh, which is the Paris region, and then one in Corsica. Um, so it's a bonus that comes on top of the production fund uh, that you can get for uh, producing in the regions. And then we also have quite a few regions. I only mentioned a few here in France that have started to ask for uh, green production action plans as part of the funding application. Um, I have to say there's nothing mandatory yet. You don't have to comply with an action plan for any national or regional film fund in France. Um, but it's something that is really uh, uh, demanded now by uh, by public funding and also by um, we start to see that coming also by from private funding um, bodies. Um, we also have a, in France a strong commitment of broadcasters. Uh, the broadcasters were the ones uh, creating Ecopod uh, 14 years ago. Um, so uh, they are working all together. So these are the main French uh, broadcasters. Um, they are working together to share resources and experiences. 
Um, they work together to standardize the tools and the frameworks um, and have a commitment to use both the Equiprod label and the Equiprod carbon calculator so that um, the, the produ productions in France can be compared one to another. Um, they also do uh, a lot internally. They do a lot of green production, of course, and uh, they train all their staffs. And we are also working with them on harmonizing the carbon methodologies um, so that they can all um, uh, include that in their um, in their uh, carbon uh, footprints of the companies. Um, and maybe one word on on artists, since we are working on uh, talking about um, green production internationally, and artists doing, of course, a lot uh, of, uh, between France and Germany, but also with other European countries. Um, and I was just talking to them last week, and I think they have a really interesting approach, which, which is they are very pragmatic. Uh, they recognize all um, serious tools, I would say, uh, all uh, carbon calculators and all labels that have been approved by either uh, national funds or uh, national uh, big um, uh, initiatives um, so that they want to make it easier for international co-productions to um, um well to produce green and they and the, the they they told me that the the only important thing for them was that they was green production and then whatever tools you use is fine for now at uh, if you if you start producing green um so a few words on the ecopod label the ecopod label was launched um this year uh, we have set a, a list of common standards, um, which is a list of criteria such as in Germany or in Austria. Um, and we define those standards uh, collaboratively with the French uh, industry stakeholders, so mainly broadcasters, producers, but also, of course, uh, film professionals. Um, the, the label works uh, as a self-assessment tool. So we have 81 criteria which are all uh, listed as questions. And for every criteria, you can get points. And at the end, you can measure your green production score and see how you're standing um, in, in terms of green production with your, with your um, film. Um, if you want to get further, uh, so beyond the self-assessment, you can certify your production by an inter uh, by a, um, independent auditor. Um, to get the Ecopod label, you have to meet the mandatory criteria. So we have eight uh, mandatory criteria. Um, you also have to reach a score of at least 65%. And you have to pass an audit by Afnor Certification, which is a French audit company. Um, and you can find the, the details of the audit on our website. We launched the, the audits in September, so only two months ago. Um, for now, uh, the label is only a voluntary industry commitment, so there's no obligation to follow the label. Uh, there's no green bonus linked to the label yet, um, but it's something that is really pushed by uh, broadcasters and also some of the film commissions are starting to uh, push for productions to uh, apply for the EcoPod label. Um, since we're talking about international productions, uh, the green label has to be, uh, you have to meet the criteria for the shootings, shooting days happening in France. And if in, as in Germany, if 25% of the shooting days are abroad, you also have to comply um, for the shooting days in the specific uh, countries by following the rules in, in those countries. Um, we also have launched um, in parallel to the label uh, research lab. Um, so we are looking at productions uh, using the Ecopod label, and we want to assess the financial, human, and environmental impact of the of following the label. So we'll be publishing first results in December and then a bigger study in, in spring. And so one of the, so the questions that we are asking is, um, does it cost more to produce green? Because that's the one question that is coming over and over again. I think everyone uh, here uh, can agree on that question. Um, or does it uh, cost less to produce green? Maybe that's the, the, the answer we'll, we'll get from the study. Um, then we want to look at how it changes the way we work, um, how it uh, creates new jobs, how it changes some existing jobs. And then, of course, we look at the environmental impact 
um, asking ourselves the question, is it enough to produce green following a, a list of criteria? Um, where does it work? Where is it not working? And what do we need to do? Um, so we have 81 criteria um, based on um, or categorized in 10 uh, categories. Um, and um, so we go from, uh, of course, uh, development all over to uh, post-production. And um, once you have calculated your score, you can get either one star, two star, or three stars uh, with the label. Um, as I told you, we have eight mandatory criteria. I've only listed two here, um, just to go into the, the international question. Uh, we have um, made it mandatory to do a final carbon footprint for the whole project, so shootings in France and abroad. Um, even if you have only one day abroad, you have to include it in the final carbon footprint. Um, but we haven't uh, asked production to use a specific tool. So you can use any industry specific tool. Um, you can use the Klimaktiv Rechner or the Ecoprod Rechner or the other tool. Um, we accept uh, all tools. And we also have made it managed. We have a green film consultant or green manager, um, but there's no official job position in France yet. Um, so we are also open to uh, people who have been trained abroad, who have been, uh, who are green consultants in other countries that is also um, applicable for the French label. Um, so we already have uh, 12 productions who got the, the label. Uh, as you can see, we have different uh, genres. So we have both documentaries and series. Um, we also have advertisement, but also uh, magazines, um, because we felt like there was a big focus on fictional films uh, doing green productions, but we wanted to push also uh, everything that's happening on TV, which is not fictional and not documentary, um, to produce in a more sustainable way. Um, and last but not least, uh, maybe a bit small focus, because that's a question that we get a lot, is how different the label, the French label is to let's say the, the German label. So I did a little comparison. I won't tell you like all the details, um, but what we um, see is that mostly uh, the criteria in France and in Germany, but also looking at um, Italy or Austria, we do have a tendency to, to have the same criteria. So at least to have common uh, a common ground. Um, so for example, here I listed the set design criteria. So of course it's not, exactly the same way that we put it because uh, in the Ecoprod label we try to be very general um, and um, then you can see for example for our criteria E3 in Germany you have three criteria that are basically the same as our E3 uh, criteria. Um, just another example on transport uh, I think here also we have uh, similar grounds with the uh, German label Maybe the biggest difference um, is that we have uh, implemented um, that you lose points um, for each flight that you make. So uh, as, as <laughs> if you have too many flights, uh, even though you have been doing a great green production on everything, but if you have been taking the plane uh, with all your staff, uh, with all your staff uh, too, too many times for the production, then you will lose points and maybe not get the label because we feel like it's a very crucial point, and we wanted to highlight that. And then also, um, as you can see in, in blue, that's one of our mandatory criteria. We have uh, asked production to use uh, to ban the use of private jets and helicopters because we feel like this there can be no green production uh, that uses a private jet or helicopter uh, in two thousand twenty three or any in any day or time. Um, I think I've already spoken too much, so uh, that's <laughs> what I will safe for now and you have my email address here if you have any questions thank you thank you so much Alisa. thank you so much that's great we got a great overview and i think it's important for people to remember there are already clear rules the co2 budgeting from the cnc so wh whoever wants to get funding that's already mandatory so we have already a similar procedure here and it's great you've emphasized also when it comes to the label ecoprod 
that there's also a lot of similarities between the systems. And I think that's something we really need to do in the future to all sit together and think about how we can harmonize all this so that we create. And I think this already has been on the plate for quite a while on the European level that we create something all together that works for everybody. But thank you so much. And I think it was very insightful for people to understand uh, the French system. And um, looking on the watch, I will move on now to Cécile Laurençon from France. And uh, we were looking for a company that already implements uh, these standards into their work, their daily work, their production work. And uh, the good thing with Cécile is uh, their company Cottonwood also is based in Berlin. There's a basis in Berlin, there's one in France. So it's it also has this German French axis uh, that's working there. And maybe Cécile, you can explain us briefly how you actually create a more sustainable environment in your company. And from what we learned is that you not only try to make productions more sustainable, but you also try to make your company uh, more sustainable using uh, especially the Ecoprod rule. So maybe you can just give us a quick, brief insight into your work. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, and uh, hello to everybody. I'm very happy to be here today. Um, I will briefly present Cottonwood because I think we don't have exactly the profile of other producers here and that makes it maybe interesting. We are a film production company. We produce only a children program for TV or for cinema. And um, we used to produce animation. And since eight years, we have been producing a live action for children uh, with ZDF, France Television, RAI, sometimes the BBC. Uh, all our programs are uh, produced only with tax rebates. We do not have any subsidies, uh, state subsidies from France, like the CNC or from Germany or from anywhere in the world. We only have uh, the tax rebate from France and uh, the tax shelter from Belgium. Our productions are between uh, Germany where we do a lot of the creative with a lot of French and English people. Then we have a shooting most of the time in studios in Belgium. And then uh, we have outside locations happening in Paris, but also sometimes in Belgium and more recently in Morocco. And um, when we started, we were really beginners and uh, we made a series which is called Find Me in Paris on ZDF right now. And it's um, we've been three years in a studio. And after producing the series, we realized the waste uh, it was with the studio, with the costumes, and also on the set and um, the planes and you know all that was discussed before. And um, since we produce premium programs for children, we couldn't imagine uh, uh, not uh, we could not imagine go further that way um, because uh, we want to do premium programs, but we do it for the children and the future of the children, and we don't want to uh, bring waste uh, more waste uh, on earth with our products. So. Um, the most important thing is that most of the time our line producer or our uh, production manager is a French person and is very uh, familiar with EcoProd regulations. And that's the most important for us because your line producer or even your producer is on the show from the beginning at the development to the end, to the post-production they all have these uh, regulation in their heads. And when we tell them, we have no obligation to be green, but we want to be as green as possible. Um, with uh, people knowing Ecopod and knowing them for like over 10 years, it's easier for us then to convince all the managers, the department managers like costumes and design. And um, and we have um, what we want to, to do now because we have been starting to be green and to, to um, reduce our uh, waste. 
on our series for the last three years now. And um, and and the, and the most and, and what we want to do in the future is that we want to do a seminar with all the people of the company, uh, whoever they are, if they work for you know legal department or finance department, because we realize everybody is concerned. So even in the contracts, you have to put you know with an actor that is coming from London, you have to say if you come from London, you're gonna take a train, you're not gonna take a plane, and people from the the legal need to know that. And so we want to do a seminar with all the company, but also at the beginning of our productions now, we want to. Um, have all the managers and, uh, uh, you know, like tell them what we are expecting from them. We want him, them to have reused materials as much as possible and et cetera, et cetera. And we have done it uh, for a series that we just shot in Brussels. And uh, it's been quite, if it's been quite fruitful. Um, and and since we have no obligation to have this label, I can also um, speak about the downside of it, which is uh, when you're shooting a series, you have a reduced budget and uh, you have a reduced time. And sometimes like you need to shoot like three days in Paris and Paris is extremely complicated to shoot in. And you come to the point, you know, you cannot be green because if you're green, you're not going to be able to shoot those three days in Paris. So this is really something that needs to be discussed from the beginning and to try uh, to maybe we don't shoot in Paris. Maybe we shoot somewhere else, which is well questionable because Paris is very important, but like some of the Paris shooting, maybe it can be done somewhere else. So it really needs as... Julia, I think, said that it needs real preparation from the beginning, or Clemens, I, I, I don't remember. But it really needs to, we need to have all the people, also people need to be convinced that it is good to, to do so. Because many, uh, you know, we experience on, on sets, uh, we, we buy everybody a bottle and a cup at the beginning of the set, so that we don't throw away cups and we don't throw away bottles. And there are some people making fun of it. And uh, there are less and less people making fun of it. But you always have people saying, oh, and, and you really have to convince everybody that it is good and that, that we like it. And also offering a bottle and a cup, of, a cup with the name of the series is also like the people appreciate it because we are asking them to be active and we give them the possibility to be active. So, so it's really something, it's a culture, uh, more than an obligation, I think, from our um, point of view. And what I can say also, we have been uh, shooting in Morocco in May and uh, in the middle of the desert. So you can imagine it's complicated to do a green uh, shooting, but still, we did it, so we didn't have, a, we had bottles of water, but we reduced it as much as possible. We had, um, you know, like they were, we had like a catering, we had no uh, plastic, we have been cleaning the places after we were there. And this is because we had a line producer, she was there in Morocco and she was convinced. So she convinced the people in Morocco. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's all I, I, I can say about us. And and uh, and seeing, I, I think you really have also as a producer to think, what am I doing? What is my job? My job is to entertain people. My, jo my job is to bring a message. It's it's to, to give good times, good stories. And at this, you know, at some point, you cannot accept to have waste to do that. You need to be as clean as possible. That's that's our, our goal at the Cottonwood. Very nice. Thank you so much, Cecile. That, that was a great insight. And what I really like is that you really say and emphasize the management has to come in. 
The line producers have to come in. And that's, in my modest opinion, one of the biggest challenges now when it comes to green production, sustainable production, to really involve also the creative part and involve the management. But that, to my mind, is extremely important. It cannot just be handed out to, oh, yeah, we'll just get somebody who will do the green job. Everybody has to do the green job. I think that's extremely important. And that you're a perfect example for that. So thanks for sharing your experience when it comes to that. And uh, I think it's a great proof of concept that it can work. And making a green production in Morocco, I did one production many years ago in Morocco. I can say that's an achievement. <laughs> that is not easy. And uh, so, so to do it and to prove that it's even possible to do it there, because we all know the circumstances are more difficult there. Uh, that's already a great, great example. Thank you so much. So we will move on now to Eva Dvorjkova Perez. I tried to pronounce the name correctly, uh, and I hope, Eva, that I did it properly. Yeah, <laughs> you did Eva... it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And and Eva is another pioneer of, of green production, and uh, she's both a producer and, uh, and also a sustainability, a green consultant, and uh, what she did, and that's what she's going to be talking about, she had a very interesting case in terms of a German company, in this case, Constantin, who is very, very, very engaged in the sustainable issue and who is really, really wanting the productions to become more and more sustainable. So Constantin comes to Prague and wants to do a green production there and then comes in Eva and Eva will tell us about how it was and what were the main steps and also the main challenges when it was about a huge production. I can say this, a huge production being done, being produced in Prague and all around Prague. So up to you, Eva. Thank you very much. Yeah, but Thank I you. have a thesis. Yes. Sorry, I, Eva. No, no, no. I wanted to say that I, I can see you uh, with your question mark. So... No, Eva, I have, a I have a thesis after having heard what uh, Cecile said, I would say, and if everybody follows your presentation like this, I would say Constantine would not have managed to fulfill the ecological standards if there would not have been a green consultant like you on board, which is why well, I would say uh, Paris without a green consultant, I think a green consultant uh, would be necessary to 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 film in a capital like like Berlin and uh, Paris and certainly Prague. So that's my thesis. I think Constantine would not have done it without you. And now it's you. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> All good. No, thank All you. Good. Thank you for such a nice intro, Philip, as well. So hello, I'm Eva, and I'm based in Prague, and. Um, I have to say, I would. It's vice versa. I wouldn't make the job without Constantine. Big uh, support that I was given, and it was a great opportunity for me to work on this project. So I will share a screen uh, with you uh, to start telling you something about how big uh, Hagen production was, because uh, we were shooting uh, last year. We started in. Uh, in September 22 and finished in April 23. Hagen is a medieval story based on Song of Nibelungs, or if I'm right in English, I'm not sure. So it's 13th century Absolutely. story uh, with a lot of medieval uh, heroes, horses, stands, battles. So you can imagine uh, that's not like ideal uh, uh, for making a sustainable shoot. and. Uh, I have to say that in this year, there was not uh, even obligatory for German films to follow the German the minimum standards. Of course, not for the shootings abroad, which is still the case, but Constantin Film decided with such a huge project to go for it, which for, uh, which to me is was very brave step. Um, so, uh, the size of the project, we had uh, 105 shooting days in Czech Republic on 23 locations plus four stages with constructions. Then we were shooting 31 days on the studio backlot where uh, here in Prague we have a built uh, medieval villages in there. So we were using this and adjusting them for Hagen project. Our biggest shooting day was uh, 509 people eating in the catering including all the talent extra stunts and horse masters. Our biggest extra day had 160 uh, extras. 
and 21 horses with hold masters and 72 stands. So this is just to, to see the size of the project, how it was. Uh, our horse department had driven 190,000 kilometers with the horses over the Czech Republic and the same amount the stunts department. So these people, there were really like crowds of these people which were just appearing for one day and then they disappeared the other day, which I think is very important to uh, also know that we were kind of like teaching people for one single day and then they disappeared and the next day new people were coming to the shoot. So we didn't even know name of each person. So this is this uh, like overview. I think is very important because then the challenge is uh, even uh, more difficult to to achieve with uh, so much people on set. But in uh, in general, we had twenty seven thousand uh, meal portions on on the whole project, out of which almost eight thousand was uh, vegetarian or vegan, thanks to Vegetarian Days and. Uh, this was a big challenge in Czech Republic, I have to say as well, because we are very meat uh, lovers, society based. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we had in total uh, 600 train tickets from Germany to Czech Republic, only 40 flight tickets from Germany to Czech Republic, which I'm very, very happy that uh, we achieved, but there was still almost 200 flight tickets mostly for the talents that were from other countries. So it was not possible to bring them by train or if they were leaving for a weekend, we had, we had to do flight tickets. But the re reduction on the travels uh, here was really very uh, significant. So this is just about the size of the project. And now I would like to tell you a little bit of uh, the situation. How is it in Czech Republic and how it was really helpful for me to uh, to to have a opportunity to work on a project like this and uh, with the German minimum standards as well, because in general I started to work as a sustainable consultant in two thousand uh, early two thousand twenty one, and uh, there was really no infrastructure for green filming in Czech Republic. So we really started to build this from scratch. I will. I already had something in my mind because I, I'm like a, a sustainable person in in my nature and a producer. So I was trying to implement some of the measures on my shoots, but uh, there was nothing like a written basis for that. So we uh, even with the Czech Producers Association, we built a platform which is called GreenFilming.cz and which is like helping people in film industry to start with the sustainability. Uh, it was really creating it by ourselves. So uh, it happened quite often that people are asking, okay, and who, did, who told you this? This is the best way to do it. You just invented it. And it was true because I just invented it I, because I thought from my heart that this is the best way to do it. So when we got a project where there was something like German minimum standards already written as a guideline, it was a big help for us already because we had some written rules that we could follow and we could share with our crews. And also it wasn't only the rules, but also uh, inspiration because there was a lot of things that we, did, we didn't think about that we couldn't implement on the film shootings. Uh, we, of course, did some basis like waste management and saving energy, but uh, the German minimum standards with their uh, not obligatory rules are going further than we uh, would have done before. So it was also uh, inspiration for us what we can do. And if, so when we got these rules into the hands with together, we sit down on, uh, with producers and with Philip, who was uh, my big support on this project. And we uh, really went step by step uh, talking about what's possible to do in Czech Republic, what's easy to do, what will be a challenge and what will not be possible because this and this reason. But even some of the measures were not possible to accomplish at the right moment. We were asking already the questions and we were asking our suppliers if they can supply us this and that. 
And I think only by asking these questions, we kind of prepared the next step because to, to, to build the infrastructure, which really didn't exist here. And I think this is very important because we were the first one that were asking our catering if they can uh, cook from local, uh, local food, uh, local sources, or if they can do vegetarian uh, day, one vegetarian day a week, and they had to learn new recipes because for 105 days, you cannot do fried cheese every, uh, every week, you know, so what, what they would normally do. So uh, we really uh, helped uh, to build something new, uh, which I believe will help other producers and other projects in future a lot because the size of the project was that big. So the impact was quite big on our film industry as well, green film industry as well. And I have to say that uh, from Constantin, uh, I had a big support from the beginning. And one of the most important thing was that I was really hired. Uh, we started to shoot in September, but I was hired from late June, I think, on the job. So I had enough time to discover and find the new routes and new solutions. So I, I, I had time to meet all the uh, head of departments. And when they told me this is not possible, it was myself who had to tell them re the recipe, how to make, the, make it possible, because they were just doing it one way uh, for 20 years of their experience. And they didn't want to change their habits. So it was always me who, who had to came to, to them with the already prepared suggestions how this could work and this is something that needs time so uh yeah so this is about the project in general and uh, how how this helped me and now I, I will just walk you quickly through uh some of the achievements from my report as the project was big my uh, report has 160 pages so i really reduced it to 20 and i will <laughs> walk you through the steps that I think were most like challenging or uh, uh, interesting for me because I, I learned a lot on this project and I hope I, I was able to teach a lot on this project, the other people. So it was uh, uh, a lot of sharing all the time. And so just a second. So yeah, so this is just uh, again to show you the size of the crew. This is the regular size of our base camp where there was no uh, extras. Uh, this is already the base camp when we had a second catering and second uh, tents and wardrobe uh, areas for all the extras and horse people. So only the size of the base camp was really huge. So this is our normal uh, base camp full of trucks and, uh, and trailers. And uh, here are already the steps. So I've put this picture in, uh, not because uh, we are able to source uh, recycled paper in Czech Republic now, <laughs> but, but because this was one of the challenges uh, as well. When we came with this rule that we have to use the recycled paper, our copy machine uh, rental house told us that uh, it will destroy our, uh, our printers and copy machines. And we really had to came to him with the studies that would prove that the uh, today's recycled paper are not that dusty and it's not hurting the machines anymore. So it wasn't just like buying recycled paper, but again, we had to prove to our suppliers that this is the way it could be done. And I learned something uh, that was one of my question when I raised, uh, I raised to Philip. This is another thing which we were, uh, because we were shooting and preparing at the Barandov studio, which is a location where there is no restaurant. So uh, lunch, lunches during the preparation are always brought from some restaurants. And we made a strict rule that we only order it from the restaurants where you can uh, um, bring it in deposit boxes. So there were no like uh, even compostable boxes for the lunches. And as the preparation was several months, uh, it was a huge amount of lunch boxes only on the preparation uh, meals during the prep. <clears throat> then the water fountains in the, in the office, I think is uh, something that everybody knows, but it's always good to remind. Something that was quite a challenge were the electric and uh, CNG vehicles because there is not so much of them in Czech Republic and there is not so many charges. So, it's uh, always a 
challenge uh, how to make them uh, functional, not to hire them and then they make them standing in front of the office because you don't have anywhere to charge. But I think we did a, a good compromise of hiring them for the for the foreign crew, the Czech crew, which came with their vehicles, were not forced to change the vehicles, of course. But we found a good balance and we had as much as possible either electric or CNG vehicles on the shoot. Then for the foreign crew, we only accommodated them in Prague in the uh, sustainable hotels, or which you will see on the next page, most of the German crew were staying in the apartments for sustainable reasons. So we really hired apartments for almost everybody from the main crew. Then as we had a lot of time to prep in the other apartment as well, or not a lot, just enough time, we had an opportunity also to test uh, other materials. And this is a sample of uh, uh, sculptures made from car recycled cardboard. So we did our own tests uh, for, for this material. Uh, the, the company that makes it, I mean, you might know them, they are called Vector Sets and they do amazing work. So we did uh, some tests for the stones. We did uh, tests on camera as well with, the, with our main DP. In the end, we didn't use them for the for the shoot, but I think just testing them again was like uh, showing our production designer, which was very happy about it. And even we didn't use it on this project. He was sure that he will use it on the next one. And we showed it to, to all the other crew members that this is a way where we can go. And uh, it was a, a big lesson for us as well that this even exists. Then what I was really happy about it, uh, once the crew heard that ab about green measures, they came with their own suggestions what they can do even more. So in the wardrobe department, they started to collect the boxes uh, to pack uh, the wardrobe after the shoot into them. So there was one room just full of uh, cardboard boxes. And they also started to collect the bread and taking them to for the animals uh, after the, uh, each week. So they, and they were proud of it. That, that was a nice thing that they were calling me to, to take picture of it because they are doing something for the planet as well. So it was really nice. And then this is uh, these are all the stuff that we did on the shoot. So the waste sorting and our green marshal, which uh, is a very important person, I have to say, uh, at least in in the beginning of the shoot, in the end of the shoot, it will, our crew was doing pretty well even without him. Uh, but in the beginning of the shoot, he had to be next to the trash bins every day because people, even in Czech Republic. We are one of the best in sorting the trash at homes. When people come to set, they just, I think, stop their brains and they just throw it to the to the first trash bin placed there. So uh, this guy was uh, really very empathetic and patient and he had ha sometimes very hard time, but his role was really like significant. And I think it's really necessary, especially if you come to the countries where this is something new, people has to be reminded that that this, it should be done this way. Then even uh, we were, we had a lot of running lunches. We were trying to do as much as we can on the ceramic plates and uh, metal cutlery. We did the vegetarian days, as I said, one, one day a week. We had a strike from some guys in the beginning. They were grilling sausages next to the, their buses on the set to show us they need meat. But it only took first two weeks, I think, and then they learned to eat uh, vegetarian as well. And then uh, we did these newsletters with our achievements, which uh, I think is really very important. And I know it was already mentioned to tell the crew that we already accomplished this. We, we collected three tons of gastro trash that was uh, sent to biogas station. And so that, that they see that you are not forcing them something that doesn't make sense, but it's, it's happening something after their effort, we do something with their effort. So, so we were sending these uh, newsletters on a regular basis. And these are, uh, again, examples uh, of one of the measures. So we were using the LED lights as much as possible in every set. Uh, this is our beautifully lit set. Uh, other LED lights and other LED lights in the studios. And then this is a quite interesting thing because we were on uh, three stages uh, and the back lot. So 
we were sitting in the art department and thinking how we can reuse maybe from one part of the construction to another or keep part of the set for the future. So uh, like, for example, these windows or arches were kept and are not broken after the shoot was finished. And we took them to the back lots, to the medieval village. So we were really thinking about each part of the set, what could be done with it because it was so beautifully done uh, afterwards. So it doesn't go all to trash. So these are all the pieces that were really saved after the project finished. It if I, I I hate to stop you because but I have it, to I'm, because I know it's my last really okay <laughs> yes. okay okay because I know it's 160 pages so I'm no no, I'm, no this I'm... is the last one <laughs> <laughs> but uh, is there anything else you would like to say because then I would just like to ask a last question but please please go ahead no 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 it was it that was it I I think that uh, it, I just want to say that we learned a lot all the check crew after the project even they were. Uh, some of them were very pessimistic in the beginning. I was like, oh, and other rules. We have so many rules. And blah, blah. in the end of the project, they came to me and they said, oh, it was really something that it makes sense and made the difference. So I'm very happy about it. Thank you so much, Eva. And, and as you just mentioned, two important things. One, that you mentioned that the rules, the standards were helpful. And the other thing that I find extremely impressive with this production is that you've been trying out a lot of new things, like with the cardboard, with the set recycling, with all these things. And that, to my mind, is so important because it's not just about catering. It's mainly about all these other aspects just as well. And I think that you've done a wonderful job on that. And I think it's, to me, extremely emphasizing and also uh, highlighting the creativity that goes along uh, with such a production. So thank you so much for giving us an insight. We could have spent hours, I guarantee to everybody, just looking through all the things you've been doing. But I think it's a great example, again, on what can be done. And I can guarantee I was there at some meetings at the beginning. People were extremely skeptical, you know, about these things or certain things. And, and, and I remember people in Germany saying, oh, in Prague, this is going to be so difficult. It's not going to work, blah, blah, blah. And it worked. And I think that's the main the main message. And, and thank you so much for, for sharing this with us. And also thanks to Konstantin who allowed uh, sharing this. Thank you so much. So I think we're, we're getting to the end. And um, I would like to thank everybody uh, because I know it's right in the middle of the day. I, I know everybody's already looking in their mails or seeing, oh my God, there's work waiting. So thanks again for this meetup we could have to, uh, today. Thank you to everybody who shared their thoughts and, and their standards and their guidelines. And I think this is something we will have to do again because uh, there's other countries and we're in a world we need to save the world or try to save a little, a little bit of it and it will only go together. It will only work together. So let's work on that. And thanks again and uh, a good new year to everybody because we will probably only meet again in the new year. I know it's kind of early to say that, but... Yeah, and soon. Merry Christmas. <laughs> no, <laughs> thank, uh, you. thank you very much on behalf of the German Film Commissions and uh, on behalf of Creative, Creative Europe Desks in Germany. Uh, lots of questions have been raised. We couldn't answer uh, fully uh, and finally today, but uh, we'll keep those and we will include those, those questions into our thoughts about how to carry on with this uh, event series um, on the international level and thank you very much for joining listening watching and um, speaking <laughs>